welcome to the Ballet Help Desk podcast. My name is Jenny, and I'm joined by my co-founder, Brett. We are both proud ballet moms who met backstage at our children's recital. During our kids' training, we found that resources were limited. We relied on Dance Magazine and fellow parents in the lobby for information. Now that our children are embarking on their professional careers, we're excited to share our combined 20 years of experience as ballet moms with all of you. We'll be bringing in experts to help make sense of this complex world of ballet training. Hello, and we're back for more information on summer intensives. This time, we're going to be focusing primarily on older kids, ages about 15 to 18. We're assuming that you know the drop-off plan, how pickup works, whether or not there will be a show, and if it's worth attending. (laughs) Um, So we'll dispense of all of that, and we'll jump right into the meaty stuff. At this age... The issues you'll be dealing with have more to do with the kinds of stuff you're probably seeing in many high schools, drugs, vaping, alcohol, all of that stuff you're hoping that your kid doesn't get mixed up in. And, um, you know, especially for ballet dancers, eating disorders, Uh, all of this happens at summer intensives and anyone who tells you it doesn't, they're just not being honest with you. Um, ideally, your dancer won't be involved, but we can tell you that this has been an issue at every single intensive or program that both of our kids have attended. Yeah. Um, the most important thing you can do as parents is coach them through how to handle these situations and explain to them why it's simply best to avoid being caught up in any of this. We know it's dangerous, not to mention there is a strong likelihood that someone will be caught and we know of several people whose kids have been caught um and you really don't want to get that phone call that your kid has been caught vaping or drinking um or something even worse uh remember that when we talked about your reputation and your dancer's reputation you know and no one wants someone with that kind of baggage attached to them that's right so um Let's switch over to what dancers should be looking to get out of summer programs at this age. Um, At this point, choices um, of summer programs really need to be much more strategic. And we're going to talk about this in much more detail when we launch our summer intensive boot camp in the fall. And we'll talk about how to um, look at summer intensives as it relates to a dancer's future. Yeah. But for this summer, dancers should be looking at rounding out the holes in their technique or picking up skills they may not be getting in their year-round program. Most important, though, at this age, it's really all about networking and exposure. Yeah. So when a student is, I don't know, 16 yeah, or that. older they should be looking at summer programs that they might be interested either in attending year round, joining the trainee program or the second company, depending on how the leveling works at that school, um, or even whether or not they might be interested in dancing for that company someday. And as I think, as we mentioned before, at this stage of the game, your reputation really matters. It really does. It, it follows you. It does even more than when you were younger and your dancer might be coming in with a good reputation and all they need to do is maintain it. Or you might have that kid who needs to engage in a little reputation rehab. And if you have one of those, this is really the time to do it. Yeah. Um, it's and not too late. It's definitely not too late. And let's be really clear. All of the schools talk to one another. They do. We found that out um, before my son joined his current program. Uh, it turns out many conversations were had with his former school. So the moral of the story, your reputation follows you whether you like it or not. In addition, it is not uncommon for teachers to talk with current students. They might ask a student if they know a particular dancer who happens to be at the school for an audition. And honestly, it is so easy for that student to sway opinions one way or the other toward the dancer who is auditioning there. And both of our kids have had this happen several times where teachers have approached them and asked them if they knew a particular student. Um, Fortunately, it was always involving students that they respected a lot. So it wasn't a problem, but um, you just never know. Yep. On the other hand, my son had a friend who recently attended an international dance festival where she ran into a fellow dancer who had been her um, 
fairly difficult roommate at a summer intensive when they were both younger. And guess what? She hadn't changed a lick. Um, at some point, I, I think that dancer's reputation will catch up to her if it hasn't um, happened already. And that being said, be really careful about what you say about a program on social media. Give your dancers a few tips on keeping their feed positive. If they have an issue with school, the school, another student or a teacher, definitely keep it off their social media, even their spam page. Kids have been known to screen record or screenshot posts and those posts have made it back to the administration. So just... That's kind of scary. Keep it clean. Yeah, keep it clean. You know, because social media lives forever. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about connections. Um, at this point in Summer Intensive Game, you want your dancers connecting with four different groups. The teachers from the school, guest teachers, and students who attended the year round, and of course, the students that are there for the summer. If your dancer is interested in staying there for the year round, it really does help to establish a great relationship with their primary technique teacher. This mm -hmm. is so important right. and it really does give you a great idea of what's to come for that year if you're interested in staying there for the year round. It will really be important and also this is someone who will remember you if you come back and audition, you have that connection and that really does help you when you're coming in and you're in a group with a bunch of different dancers yeah. and they'll remember you from the year round. It, yeah, it, it, you'd be surprised how many times that happens. Happens. And when Sam auditioned for his second company, he had to go through a screening round first um, that was a larger audition. And fortunately, both of the women who were running the audition remembered him from his prior summers there. And so when he walked in the door, it was very comfortable and it was like, oh, hi, Sam, how you doing? Right. Which is what a gift. Yeah. Um, if your dancer is interested in attending a particular school year round or even being considered for a trainee spot, it always does help to have a main teacher. Um, in your dancer's corner. Um, it really does help. If there are guest teachers, it's a great idea to get to know them. You never know where else they might teach and you could run, even run into them in a school you could be interested in attending. For example, didn't that happen to Sam? Yeah. Oh, it did. That's right. Um, he went to a summer program one year where three of the guest teachers were pretty well-known artistic directors of major U.S. Mm -hmm. and European ballet schools. And it was a golden opportunity for him to get to know those teachers. And he ended up not um, trying to attend those schools, but having all three of those there yeah. was great. He was there for two weeks and those guys were teaching all the way through the two weeks. It's just so cool. Yeah. And, you know, the year-round students, they really do give you a great sense of what the vibe is at that school. They can also kind of give you an inside line or kind of a scoop as to how many students have left and how many students there might be spots available in the fall. And, you know, those last minute like slots do become available more often than you think. They do. Um, and remember, um, whether you like it or not, Teachers and the current students talk. They do. So you always want to make sure to have great relationships with the year-round kids. First, because it's always nice to have more friends. And second, you never know where you might find allies to give you, you know, that extra nudge to help you get into the school. Mm -hmm. And as an aside, when your dancer gets into the higher levels of summer programs, also, don't be surprised if they're taking class with company members. Um, that happens really often in summer programs. So not only the year-round students, but if a company member talks to you, really encourage your dancer to have a casual conversation with them. It'll give you a sense of the vibe of the company and the school. So yep. do they interact with the year-round kids? Is it casual? Right. Um, if they know them. And don't take it as gospel for the tone of the company, but it's a good indicator of the overall culture or vibe in a program. And also, don't be surprised if the company members do not talk at all and they just kind of are in their own little world and they're just focused on you know taking class and getting in and out and trying not to like cause a ruckus or a stir um they do that quite frequently too where they just want to kind of come in anonymously um and then slink out anonymously right and also one note um in several companies and affiliated schools company members and students are not allowed to interact um, because of liability reasons. So make sure you know the protocols of the school your student is, att is attending because the last thing you want is a big faux pas. Yep. 
It's also important to establish friendships with as many other summer students as you can. At this age, they're really only a year or two from heading into trainee and second company positions. And once you're all in professional careers, this is your peer group. Yeah. You want them to love you and to want to dance with you. Yep. Um, also, let's talk scholarships. One other note, if your dancer has been given a scholarship to attend their summer program, Take it seriously. At this age, scholarships mean that they're truly interested in you potentially for full-time attendance in the program. And so they're going to have their eye on you um, throughout the summer. Yeah, that's really that's really true. And it's so nice when you get into the upper levels and you still get scholarship. It it It's a nice boost. Okay, so a few more tips for making the summer as effective as possible. First, stay out of the drama. <laughs> It's, I know it's easier said than done. And we all know drama follows certain teenagers like flies to honey. And our avoid, our advice is to really try to avoid that as much as possible. Of course, we all want to know what the tea is and what's going on, and that's fine. But you really don't want word getting back to the administration that your dancer was involved in any way. Um, I know it's sometimes hard, and sometimes there are just those people that bring all of it. But, yeah. you know, keep a friendly distance. Um, that would be kind of our recommendation. Um, and finally, your dancer is only a few years from being a professional, and it is time to start acting like one. I know it's probably second nature at this point, but this does bear repeating. Invest in some decent cover-ups. No more flannel pajama bottoms. Um, the old cliche is dress for the job that you want, not the one that you have. And it really does hold up here. I mean, of course, be comfortable, but you know, you can look professional and you don't have to break the bank. Um, and our previous video where we talked about um, different gear, uh, we have some great dupes in there if if you are interested in maybe finding some replacement for cover-ups for your students. Also, okay, I know this seems crazy, but you would be surprised how many people still come with super messy flyaway hair, bangs in their face. Just make sure your hair is neat. It really is a sticking point for several teachers yeah. that, you know, you might come from a much more casual school, but until you get the vibe of your summer intensive, come like you're going to an audition. Hair neat, sprayed down. Guys, that goes for you too. I know you've got those fabulous golden floppy locks, but get them out of your face. And women really avoid, and men, avoid the heavy jewelry. You, and when you're doing pot, no one wants a chain smacking you in the face um, or, you know, getting caught somewhere. Dangly earrings. It is a sticking point for some teachers. And so a lot of teachers don't care. But this even happened in Abby's class last week where her artistic director came in and flipped out on all of them because there was just a jewelry store on at too many girls and he just kind of lost his mind. And so just keep in mind that to keep your standards up until you really know the vibe of, of a school and really keep it very, very professional. And for the love of all that is ballet, show up on time, please. <laughs> we know they're teenagers. No one's around to wake them up. Maybe even their roommate. I know that this has happened many times if their roommate is nice, but sometimes those roommates will let those kids sleep in and sleep past their alarm and it is not their job to wake you up. So get up in time and make sure you have a decent breakfast before you get to class. Yeah, that's right. The you know, and the, the oversleeping in summer programs is epic. Mm -hmm. My son actually had a roommate who had a really hard time waking up. So he set not one, not two, but three alarms. And he put them across the room, which forced him to get out of bed. Did it always work? Um, no. But my son happens to be a morning person. And so he served as the alarm of last resort and usually managed to get him out of bed in time and off to class. Yeah. So finally, if you're interested in potentially staying for year round or even auditioning to become a trainee or second company member, make sure you've done your homework. Does the school hold a formal audition during the summer? Or is it more informal where you might get pulled aside and kind of whispered in your ear and invited to stay? Um, regardless of how it happens, it's really incumbent upon you to know this going in. Don't get there and all of a sudden be like, I wonder how auditioning works. And also if they do pull you aside, be prepared to respond appropriately. 
what we'd suggest is keeping it pretty vague yeah. um, and don't make any commitments until you see what the school's really talking about. You'll have people whispering in your ear, but until it's on paper, um, don't make any decisions. And offers always come in writing. And like we said, decisions shouldn't be made until you see what's on paper because what's whispered in your ear and then what ends up showing up on paper could be different. And don't hang your hat on a verbal. There, lots of times things get whispered in your ear but if they do not come to fruition, that actually happens a lot more than you think it does. Yeah. And um, don't hang your hat and make decisions based on that until you have something concrete in writing from that school um, or that trainee program or that second company because um, verbals happen a lot. You really have to wait until it's there is a contract there um, in order to make any decisions and move forward. Agreed. And it feels like post-COVID, that seems to be happening more and more. Way more. Yeah. So just make sure you get everything in writing before you make any commitments or notify your existing school that you are thinking about leaving. So also, if you are thinking about, if you're at a summer program and you're like, oh, I think I might want to dance for this company, again, do your homework. Watch as much of this company as you can on YouTube. And if your dancer has a chance to attend a live performance of the company while the summer program is happening, absolutely go. There are, sure. are several programs where you'll get free tickets to go to the shows. And that's really, I think, the best way to get a sense of, of how you might fit and you know what the dancers are all about. For sure. And we're sure that your kids will have a great time and come back much improved as dancers. Um, and hopefully we've given you some food for thought on how to manage all of that stuff that comes up as a lead up and during the programs. Thank you so much for listening. As I post this last podcast of 2023, I would like to take a minute and thank all of our listeners. This time last year, we were in the can we really do this stage of creating Belly Help Desk. Thank you for listening, for writing in, reaching out, and helping all the ballet parents out there with your summer intensive reviews. It was really meant a lot, and we are so grateful for all of you. We are also immensely grateful to all of our guests we, who we have had on the show. Most of them have never heard of us, but believed in our mission statement, dove in, and gave us so much fabulous content. There's a lot to look forward to in 2024. We're kicking off the new year strong with an incredible interview with Jason Young from the Data Points Guide. Stay tuned. Happy New Year. If you liked what you heard on this episode, please take a moment and help us spread the word. Follow us and leave us a review on your preferred podcast platform. Tell a friend and share on your social media. Also, now that your dancer has returned from their summer intensives, please head over to BelletHelpDesk.com and leave an anonymous review of the program. Help your fellow dance parents by letting them learn all about the good, the bad, and everything in between. Stay in the loop on all of our latest content. Subscribe to our newsletter at BelletHelpDesk.com and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until next time, have a great day.